ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our fifth episode of Let's Learn StarCraft. I lied to you. I lied to you. It's the fourth. It's the fourth one. We did the introduction, which was episode zero. And then episode one was Stark vs. Fantasy. So we've done an intro to strategy, we've done an intro to mechanics, and now it's time for us to talk about our very first specific mechanics video, how to do proper base management. Um, when I say base management, um, I'm talking about all the things that are going on up in your corner of the world that don't really have anything to do with your opponent. Things like the building of SCVs, the building of workers, where do you put stuff in the base, and so on and so forth. And I want to talk about how to do that well today. Um, first, to break down base management, a really important idea is how to organize, lay everything out, and how it connects to something called SimCity which is a common term in StarCraft. The second thing is we're going to identify all the repeated tasks that exist, worker production, supply depots, uh, you know, macro, all these kinds of things. And we're going to actually look at ways to help use our hotkeys and our built-in game controls to succeed at these. And last, we're gonna round out with a little bit of practice. We're also gonna take a look at how this applies to Terran, how this applies to um, Zerg and Protoss individually. And I just want to note that one of the big important things um, that you may recall from the previous video that was an introduction to mechanics is that in mechanics there is how well do I do the specific task and how do I order the actions of those various tasks in a sequence so that I am succeeding at all of them. And the one thing that's really nice about beginning with base management is for one you just do it every single game, and it happens from the start of the game. It doesn't matter if you're doing against computers. It doesn't matter if you're on an infinite money map. It doesn't matter if it's a team game. You're always going to start off with base management. So understanding the principles of it and focusing on that right now is a very clean, easy way to begin getting more uh, success. But it will also help you practice the most important aspect of mechanics in general, which is the idea of sequencing things. So first, I want to talk about that first thing there. I'll even open it back up in case any of you have the memory of a goldfish. Oh my gosh, where is it? We're going to talk about organization, layout, and SimCity. All right, first things first. When you want to practice your mechanics, go to a single player game and type in, show me the money. Type in Operation Seawall, and you now have all the money you ever want an infinite building time to test getting good organization and base layout. Now we're going to start with Terran right now. And uh, it's very easy to think that mechanics is all about hand speed and trying to do all that sort of clicking. Yes, base layout is super important just to make sure that you have organization. And here is an example of some of the stuff that is problematic that I see people do. They'll just sort of throw stuff down willy-nilly. They'll build some supply depots. Oops. I actually uh, played a game with a friend where he did this today. He built three depots out this way. And suddenly, when I did an Arbiter attack down here, he was trying to fit his whole army through this little hole here. Ugh. Um, also, in that very same game with a friend, uh, he had focused on mech builds, which is um, a lot of factory units. And he built a factory here. And he had built another factory over here. And then he went, shit, I don't have enough space for my factories. Because he had pre-built these. And he started to build them down here. Okay, this is a, an example of how all of this happened because of this first little decision to build a little wall of depots going to the left. This choice to spread things out a bit. It's a problem, right? Problems begin to emerge. So... Because I have saved a game in the same position. No way. No way. It loaded me as a different race. Are you serious? Oh, there's Terran top right. Okay. Whew. <laughs> um, a really important thing to do is just to try to figure out some good base layouts right off the bat. And, and here are ways to do it. You just type in cheat codes, you save it in one position, and you get a rough sense for it. So you'll see a lot of times Terran players will just build endless walls of SCV down, or excuse me, endless walls of supply depots down on this side. And this is great. 
because this is not a location where your factory units, your barracks units, any of your ground units would ever have problems making their way anywhere. Right? There is no pathfinding issues that can emerge. And then you say, I reserve this top area for where I do my production structures. And now you just need to do a little bit of practice of where you actually want these things to lay out. Some common problems that wind up happening uh, with people who are doing building placement is they just want to check for where the buildings go first. And they don't think about a lot of functional use cases. And that's okay because problems will bake out themselves. Here's a very common one that winds up happening. I see a lot of Terran players do this. They will lay their base out in such a manner that they will have some of these uh, add-on factories right next to some of these non-add-on factories. And it feels like, hey, we are successfully being efficient. But watch what happens when I start to produce things out of all of these. There's a little bit of clogging that can potentially happen with just this little tiny sliver of space. You saw this single tank kind of uh, have some potential to get stuck. So maybe you go, you know what, no, I want to actually scoot these things over a little bit. There we go, that's better. Oh wait, no, I see, I have a problem now. Because these are pushed all the way up against this Vespine gas geyser. Mmm, damn. Now my vultures are going to have to move all the way around this way if I produce out of these factories. And then they're going to get stuck in the worker line, and then I have more problems. Or, or tell me you haven't done this. If you've been playing StarCraft at all, you've likely encountered situations like this where you have just these terrible building placements that lead to just these ghastly rallies where you have tons of workers mining and that vulture never makes it to the battlefield. The high level thing I want to state to you is before you play on a new map or before you wind up jumping into a new strategy, open up the single player and think, where do I roughly want to build everything? And let me try some things out. This is an excellent example of us having tried some stuff out and discovering it doesn't work. No problem. We'll just load our Terran top right thing, type in our cheat codes and we're in good shape. Operation Seawall and Black Sheep Wall. Great. So now we're ready to continue onward. There's other things that I want you to consider when it comes to the planning of your bases, when it comes to layouts, which is where you want to be constructing defensive structures. Often you will build a command center here and you will... Uh, just think to yourself, oh, you know what? I might be up against Mutalus at some point in the game. Where do I exactly want to build those turrets so that they cover everything? And if you're a normal Terran player, you're go probably going to have a bunker here. You probably won't have this engineering bay here. Let me get that one the hell out of the way, because that's likely not going to be here. It's very useful to be able to say something like, you know what? I want to build my turrets here, here, and then two more up here and here. Simple. Now, we've been doing this for like five minutes, something like that, five minutes or so. This is not a time consuming task. This is something that so few people do, it hurts me. So few people, oh. Oh my god, so few people do this. This is something that I actually learned from my brother. Nick said, never play on a map unless you open it up and you build everything in advance and just kind of roughly see how shit works in there. Now, uh, let's talk about things that are a little bit more Terran specific in terms of just base layout. Terran have a lot of huge clunky add-ons specifically to their factories that get in the way of things. That's what a really big concern. Also, they have a lot of supply depots. So you have to plan a ton of space. Terran overall have the largest footprint. These are 3 by 2 buildings, as you can see by the fact that they take up a 3 by 2 square. Very good. Very good. An excellent lesson. Um, and there's one more set of buildings you need to consider outside of factories, slash barracks, supply depots, and defensive structures, which is tech structures. You'll see lots of cute things like, you know, there might be a engineering bay that's built up here.
You might build your armories up here. You might build your science facility up here. Just to make sure that it is maximally difficult for an enemy to scout those. And similarly, an academy, right? Just want to think these things out a little bit. Tell me this has not happened to you before. And I know it has because I've gotten tons of wins off this. You just haphazardly build an academy down here, and right when Stim is at 90% done, Mutalisks kill it. Ooh, shit. Better think of a new place in our pre-game base planning in order to figure out how to solve that problem. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about base layout. We will go on to Protoss, we will go on to Zerg in a moment, but there is a new concept I want to introduce you to, which is what is called SimCity. So, SimCity is the basic idea of how do you solve problems in your game by making buildings in certain places. We will see the first ever SimCity that existed in StarCraft 2, or excuse me, this is in StarCraft 1 right now. Okay, this is... This is very exciting moment. This is big. This is, this is the first one. This is the first. Okay? This is the first one. Alright. Show me the money. Operation Qual. Once upon a time, someone figured out that if you build a supply depot, and then a supply depot, and then underneath that, a barracks. Ooh. This is a solid wall to almost all units. And when you want to get the big puppies out, boom, you lift that barracks off. There it is. Ha ha, the first Sim City. Now you can see why this might be a very exciting um, revelation for a lot of Terran players. Dealing with Zealots is a big problem, but this is a wall off for the Zealots. This is a wall off for Zealots. Zealots can't get through. And you know what else is cool? Marines can get through on this particular little sliver. And so now, this little idea of sim citying these buildings, that's the verb. I don't know what the etymology of this is. That's just what it's called. This is kind of cool. Now, if you've played other games or if you've played StarCraft 2, you're immediately going, holy shit, what do you mean zealots can fit through and Zergling or and Marines can? Every unit in this game has a different pixel by pixel size. So sometimes when buildings are touching each other, very small units can fit through, and other times they cannot. Now, um, by the way, Strophium in chat says, you don't know where the term SimCity comes from? No, I know, I know the game SimCity, but I don't know why making building wall-offs specifically is called SimCitying, whereas doing the layout of your base is not called SimCitying? I have no clue at all. I have no clue. I cannot explain that to you. That's what I mean. Now, we are, we are sticking with the idea of just introducing some concepts, and I want you to immediately note, we've talked about organization, layout, and SimCity. This was all one point. Why do you think I have these two things listed together with each other? It is because this is helpful against a specific opening, Zealots messing with us, and it messes with our base layout. So these are the two tensions that are often um, facing each other when you are considering your organizational layout of your base with SimCity to help you solve various problems. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to load a Zerg manage the stuff. So in this Zerg um, example, this is an example of an interesting and common SimCity using a hatchery and some evo chambers, using some buildings and putting sunken colonies behind them to hold things off. That's cool from a SimCity perspective, but from an organizational perspective, this can be a problem. Because if you're trying to make a whole bunch of units exit from your base, <laughs> sorry, I forgot to put my cheat codes on. You can wind up with occasional little traffic jams, but we might go, oh, okay, this is this is good enough. Now, if we 
load our Terran example, I want to stress to you that tanks and vultures do not like this wall off. They do not like this wall off at all. So we're going to begin introducing some SimCity uh, techniques, some SimCity tactics that exist, and we're going to talk about how they are occasionally discordant with our goals for future planning, and some ways to avoid that. So I just want to build a whole bunch of tanks just so you can see. Let's just build ourselves 10 tanks, which is a completely reasonable amount of tanks to have. Watch me try to walk down here. If I try to click these guys down, there will be a lot of catching and problems as a result of these two supply depots. Do you see? <laughs> Come on, guys! Come on, dudes! Now, in, in future episodes, we will see that spam clicking can help avoid the stupid pathing. But you'll notice that they go in a one-by-one -one limbo line and it's still a big obnoxious pile of garbage. Especially if you have any amount of units coming down this base. Right? Great, this pathing. We are, we are kind of working around by spam clicking. But remember, if you're playing a game you're going to have lots of factories constantly flooding out units, and you're not going to be able to babysit every single one that's coming down. And for that reason, we always need to be very mindful of the way that SimCity interacts with our organization and layout. So I want to give two concrete examples of thinking of these things through, but I want to start with a, a, a sort of basic story first, which is, uh, let me go ahead and reload this same thing. Great. I'm going to start with a story. Operation Qual. I want to start with a story first, which is a Terran player that said, Sean, I really like your base layout video ideas, and I, I have found that starting my supply depots and building them down here feels really nice. And I found that building my, my factory four hexes over from this Vespine gas geyser, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Building it four over is good, so great. And I'm gonna build all my factories here in Terran vs. Protoss, this is my plan. And you know what happens? You get Zealot rushed. Long before any of these factories are ever done, long before we even get to have this nice organizational layout, you die. This is when you want to revisit Sim City and ask yourself before I change my strategy, before I change my build, before I change my organizational layout, can I solve this problem by doing interesting things with building placement? And I'm losing to a zealot rush. I will now show you the most common modern Sim City in Terran vs. Protoss. And I want to show you how you can generate your own knowledge by doing this. So in this game, I started as Protoss, I turned on cheat codes. I created a Terran player. Oops. I created a Terran player here and I just mind controlled an SCV and built all the buildings I needed. What you can do now is you can test. Die. You can test out things. I'm actually going to move this guy to the top right so he's quieter. You can test out things like where zealots and marines can fit through. Here is a common thing to note. Supply depot on the left, barracks on the right. Zealot can walk right through that shit, man. So can a marine. Alright, walks right on through that. Alright, so now I'm going to place a the barracks on the other side. And what I want you to see is that the marine can fit through. But the Zealot cannot. See, here it lands. Go through, Zealot. Oh, no, he can't. Uh, but the Marine can. Now, you might be saying, shit, Sean, do I need to remember a long list of these things? Eventually, you'll get ingrained in your memory. But for whatever race you play, 
and for whatever matchup you're interested in, go create a game with a dark archon and just start fiddling with buildings and see what walls off what. In future episodes, I will talk about the specific building placements that will resolve those, but I want you to know, I'm a Zerg player, so I know Zerg SimCity rules very well. I don't know Terran rules very well, I don't know Protoss rules very well, and that's fine, because I will generate them when I need to. Same thing with my brother. My brother plays Protoss. He does not know Zerg SimCity rules. He'll be able to figure it out when he sits down and, and does stuff for like five minutes. Another crazy thing I want you to note, a barracks that is diagonal to a command center like this. Drum Smith, is the remaster going to respect these idiosyncrasies? Man, this is remastered. This is it. So yes, Drum Smith. A barracks that's to the right of the command center. Marine can get through. Amazingly, despite all use of my eyes, Zell cannot get through. Hot damn. Hot diggity dog. Okay. So, we want to have, one, an organized base layout. Two, try to use SimCity to solve our problem of a zealot ruining our shit. Let's combine these two using our wonderful Wubulus top right Terran thing that I've reloaded so many times. We can build a supply depot here. We can build a barracks like this. And now, SCVs and Zealots cannot get through here. Marines can. So what do you do when the Zealot shows up? You shoot at it, and then you retreat back through here, and you shoot at it. And when it gets close to you, you retreat up through here, and you shoot at it. Then you retreat back through here, and you shoot at it. Okay. What about the rest of our organizational layout? Doesn't need a change. We can keep building supply depots down here. We can keep building factories up here. We might need to change this placement of our first factory. Maybe building it all the way up here is a little too far. But we're still in okay shape, aren't we? Still in okay shape. You can imagine defending against zealots who are here and retreating on through. Now I'd like to note something that I think is so cool. By using building placement, by doing smart things with marine control, you now have a safe opening without a wall in. Very nice. Very good stuff. Um, I think I want to say a few more things about that. Let me open up my notes. Great. Um, the core reason I showed you this is I want to not do the following. I, I do not want to say to you, here are the SimCity rules. Also lay out your base like this. There are many different maps. There are many different openings. You are going to encounter lots of them when you are playing in your StarCraft career. So the thing I do want you to keep in mind is, one, how should I pre-plan and organize my base for maximum efficiency? Will help me with my macro, will help me smooth everything out, will help me know where things are. And two, how can I use SimCity to solve some problems? Okay. Let's do another example. Let's just endlessly load our Terran top right example. Here's another example of common uh, building placement problems that emerge in a matchup. We've been talking about Terran versus Protoss. Let's do Terran versus Zerg. Show me the money. Operation Seawall. I could just save it after I've typed these in, but I want to type them in every time so it gets jammed into your head. I have seen many Terran players do this, where they will build their endless line of depots I actually played against a Terran player not long ago who did this. He literally built them in a line down this side. Yes, sir. Order received. Job finished. All right, great. And in particular, he built his academy down here. So I just harassed and killed off his academy. And in fact, I couldn't manage to get to his worker line because he had built a whole bunch of turrets here. So I just killed off all his depots and he couldn't build anything. So, how might we change our base layout from a bunch of depots and tech buildings here and a bunch of barracks here? How might we change that to address the Mutalisk problem? 
How might we change that? Well, let's go ahead and just think about some readjustments. It's not gonna take us long. It's gonna take us like two or three minutes. Often what Terran players will do against a Zerg is they will build their first few structures very close together. They will build them like this, sort of ringing this top side of their base, like so. And then in this fashion, when they need to build those turrets, in the early game, you're not really going to be exceeding something like 80 supply or so. And so they build these first few depots up here, or sometimes lining this top wall, so that then they can build turrets that defend both their mineral line and these depots. Simple. Later on in the game, when mutilists are not a big threat anymore, okay, we just go back to this. Ugh. We just go back to this, and that's okay. That's totally okay to go to later on in the game. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about layout and SimCity and all of the ideas uh, therein. We've talked about this idea of first plan your damn base, make absolutely certain that you're using SimCity in various ways, like walling off the front, and think of how you might want to adjust to solve your problems. And solving of problems in Brood War is generally not big. It's pretty straightforward. You just have to take the time to do it at all. Good. Now, what I want to talk about is I want to load something entirely different. Oh, here we go. You will recall this from the very first introduction episode of Let's Learn StarCraft. This is an FD opening that we're going to use as a basis to look at all the things that we want to do in base management. And there's going to be five. I'm bre breaking down five active in-game skills. Planning out your Sim City, planning out your base layout. We've already done them. We've already done that. We're not worried about it. I mean, you will see right here. I have already done my Sim City right here at the start. I have already done my um, factory right where I want it to be, four tiles away. I have already begun to build depots right here. We've already done all of the, those steps. Let's go ahead and name the five things that you will need to do in this game. I love how this game looks when it's so slow. Mm. The first one, I'm just going to speed it up a little bit because that just looks so weird to me. The first one is constantly making SCVs. And we're actually just going to sit here for a moment and we're going to think about this. I want you to just know that this does not take a lot of effort to do. This, this does not take a lot of effort. All right, here it comes. Woo. Typically, when you're trying to do um, worker management, you want to have at most one worker building, and you want to queue this one up right before the second one's done. You don't want to do stuff like this. Doing this in a way is okay. Doing this in a way is okay. To just queue one up right after it finishes. But this is 50 minerals just sort of hanging there not doing anything. You want to try to have as little of that as humanly possible. And now if you're if you're asking about super top pros, super top pros will always build this worker right when it's 90% done. That's great. But if you're new, no problem. Queue up. Queue away, man. I just want you to know that ideally you don't do that. Same thing is true with all other aspects like building tanks, building marines, and these sorts of things. A few things to note about having easier worker management. Don't rally your workers in the middle of your worker line. Don't do that. Rally them away from the minerals so when you go back to the command center... No way the computer is attacking me. No fucking way the computer is actually attacking me. 
Oh my god, they destroyed my expansions. I don't believe that. Okay. Rally your SCVs away from your command center. So that way, when the workers pop out, and you go back to your base, you have a very easy thing that you need to select. I'm actually going to load up a game. Uh, let's do here. Let's manage our stuff. Great. This is a game where I actually encountered the exact same problem, where the Protoss player wound up attacking me during the save. <laughs> That's fine. So, related to worker management, it can be really nice to have your workers being built out here, rallied here. Similarly, have these workers rallied here. So that way, when I go to each different location, it's very easy for me to box in a similar spot. Watch. I go back to my main base, I box below and send, go over to here, box below and send. You don't actually have to rally here, because remember, you're trying to just be overall very efficient. Getting this guy, like, 0.3 seconds there faster doesn't really matter once you get to the mid-game. You just want to be very organized. This is a good technique for that. So this is our first mini-game. It's trying to make sure that we build workers. Another useful thing to do is to try to make sure that the production in each area is synced. Build two workers here, build two workers here at the same time. This is this is going to be very useful for us because we can just kind of do it as one big chunk, right? F2 worker click, F2 worker click. And I'll talk about what hotkeys I'm doing here in a moment, but the important thing is that our workers are synced up. If for whatever reason, If for whatever reason our workers get a little bit off synced, like say this starts at this point, eh, then you're going to wind up with a lot of babysitting that you'll need to do at different times. You want to make your life easy for yourself, right? You don't want to have to come here because now this is like every five or six seconds you have to come over here and it's uglier. It's just significantly easier to do this sort of thing where they're synced up. Yeah? Cool. That's the first base minigame is worker building. Second base minigame is supply depot building. Where it says 60 is 76, one of the easiest ways to lose a game of StarCraft is just to get supply blocked. You get less workers, you get less money, you can't get enough units out, you don't get enough stuff, you just die. It's bad. The third thing that follows very closely with SCVs is base production. Making sure that all these puppies are actively churning out. All right, and you want to, again, make your life easy. You want to start all your tanks at the same time. You want to try to get your vultures and your tanks to sync up. So right now, you'll note that vultures and tanks are not synced up because vultures build a little faster than tanks. It's totally okay. Often what players will do is they will just try to come back and queue up an extra vulture whenever they queue up a tank. And then just be very careful about not having too many of these queued up. Because after a while, after about two tanks are built and after about three vultures are built, they'll be back on sync again. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one more time. So once again, if things get a little off sync, make yourself make your life easier. Go tank vulture vulture. Soon thereafter, go vulture vulture. And when this second one finishes, this is about when you'll want to come back and queue up another tank, and then they'll get resynced again. Now, ideally, you're not queuing these. Certainly, the more that you improve the more you will want to not have anything queued up to maximize the amount of money that's in your bank. First and foremost, you want to be making your base macro. So we've done. Always build workers. Always build depots. Always be macroing. Third game, 
third little mini game I want you to keep track of is what is the next step in your build order. All right, this is surprisingly easy to screw up because you're spending so much time building workers here and so much time building workers here that you forget like, oh shit, that's right. This is a this is a build where I get a lot of upgrades. Oh, I forgot my armory. My upgrades are going to be like ah. So that's one of the slower things. SCP good to go, sir. SCP good to go, sir. And the last thing to note is upgrades. This is one of the hardest things for new players in the game to, to get go, comfortable with, SCP which is that right when an upgrade finishes, you start a new one. It can be pretty easy to get in the habit of building workers because you're just doing it all the time. And it's sort of like on a scale of one to 10, a lot of people start at five, or we'll work to a six, and we'll work to a seven in terms of capability. But upgrades just get forgotten all the damn time. So, I want you to have these five in your head, right? Workers, depots, these are the most important. Macro, next step, and upgrades. I'm going to load back into this FD1 and here is an exercise that I would love for you to just do. I would love for you to just try to, as best you can, keep everything in your base running smoothly. So I'm kind of going around and I'm clicking on things. I'll talk about some tricks to make this more efficient, but this is the exercise that I want you to do. I don't care if you're building your supply depots a little early, I just don't want you to get supply blocked. I want you to make sure that your SCVs are always producing. And notice how I'm actually clicking on things and checking. This is your homework assignment to just do this sometimes. Just against the computer and get kind of used to building all the things. And you'll start to notice things right now, like the fact that I've already planned out where I'm building things is very helpful for me. Okay. All right, now you're noticing I have a pretty good rhythm down with my SCV building, with my tank building, with my marine building. Thanks to this sort of rally over here, it's easy to click on. Thanks to these little rally things here, it's easy to click on. All right, cool. And when you're in these rhythms, all right, let's build another supply depot, cool. All you're trying to do is to not miss something. It is more important that you nail worker production, depot production, and macro than it is for you to be getting things quickly. It's very easy to go like, okay, I'm going to build a factory, and you know what? I want to build another factory. And then this happens. You build the factory, and then you go, okay, I'm going to build this. These protosses. You maybe start an upgrade. And then you go, oh shit, I don't have enough money for this. So then you start waiting here. You start hitting T to build another tank. And then you realize, shit, I don't quite have enough money for another worker. And then you realize, shit, I don't quite have enough money for another Marine. The attack's been held. If you try to rush too quickly to build the next step thing, you're going to kind of mess up. So I want you to just spend time as you're building up in these bases, trying to get to like 150 supply without missing a beat. Are Marines the right thing to build? No, actually. No, they're not the right thing to build. Totally not the skill you're working on. Oops, look at these. My factories are not synced up. I'm going to... I'm going to not build one. I'm actually going to cancel this. I'm going to line these two up. There we go. That feels nice. Okay, cool. Wow. I'm starting to be able to make things more quickly. Let me add on more supply depots. Ugh. Uh, okay. Let me just keep checking on things. Okay. Oops, this isn't building. I have not done anything except know what the hotkeys are for things. All right, and I'm just trying to build. I want you to do this. This is this is your homework. This is your exercise. Ready to roll out. 
Okay. Let me go ahead and pop out of this mission. So we've talked a little bit about what are, what is your practice homework, right? It's to try to plan out a base layout and to think of how SimCity intersects with that. It's to maybe play some games and try to solve some problems and to think how you might readjust your layout and that's your pre-planning. I want you to practice these five things, worker building, depot building, and never missing a beat in macro. And try occasionally to remember the next step in your build order and try occasionally to remember the very next um, um, upgrade that you have coming along. But just make sure that everything's going smoothly. What you're going to find is that those first three things, workers, depots, building stuff, that takes almost all of your money. Almost all of it goes to that. And that's great. I just want you to keep getting smooth. This is the equivalent of like, oh, you want to join the soccer team? Well, let's just start having you run a lot. Because if you're running a lot, then you're going to be in good shape for the team. Let me give you some extra techniques that will assist you in your journey. Uh, whoops. I want to load a game. Oh. Okay, so first thing that I want to note is how important it is to figure out a hotkey setup that works for you. Here's a really basic one. One, two, three are your units. Four, five, six are your buildings. So if I select this command center and hit control four, select this barracks and hit control five, now I can go four S five M. Well, hell, let's keep this streak going and get this factory on six so I can go six T. So now if I want to check on my things, four, five, six, four, five, six, four, S, five, M, six. All right, cool. I can actually manage a lot of my base when I am far away, just by doing stuff like this. Just by tapping and checking, four, S. Great, four, five, six, four, five, six, M. All right, let's build another Marine. Let's go ahead and six T, right? Four, five, six, four, five, six. Great. And then all you gotta remember to do with your actual screen is keep sending your workers to mine. <laughs> okay, let me go ahead and cancel these. So there's less action happening. And you can obviously have your army as control one. One, four, five, six. So this is why you'll see a lot of people do this, like I was saying earlier. Just trying to make sure that the sequencing is good. The next thing that I want to note is screen hotkeys, where if you hold shift and F2, you can be over here and you hit F2 and it moves your screen, moves your whole screen. So this is a very convenient way to say, okay, I'm going to go 4S, 5T, or excuse me, uh, 6T, and then go 5M, cool, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, 4, 5, 6, everyone's still building. Okay, I have a worker happening soon. Instead of tapping 4-4 four, four to go back, I can hit F2 and send that one over. Here's our noble Protoss warrior trying to kill us. And actually might actually succeed here. You know, I gotta be honest with you. In these examples, it never occurred to me that the computer player might attack me. My bad. Look at this. Look at this. Pathetic. I have to use a cheat code to stay alive, huh? so funny. So, just using these hotkeys to try to check on things, using F2 to kind of move here. If you have an expansion over here, you can do F2 and F3 and bounce between them. Rally your dudes down here, away from your mineral lines, that way you have an easier time doing it. And there was one more thing to note. Great. I think this is, this is mostly it. Last one thing that I would note that I find really helpful is if there is a building that has some sort of critical upgrade on it, I like to give that a hotkey that's way out of the way. So four, five, and six are very close to my finger. Four, S, five, M, or excuse me, five, M, six, T. This is very easy for me to just click on with a finger. But I'll sometimes do something like build an armory up here and hotkey that is zero. So that way I can just four, five, six, four, five, six, four, five, six, check on my sort of active things, and then occasionally tap zero 
and just kind of see what's up. See how that upgrade's going. So I want you to practice this. I want you to practice just trying to keep all your production going. Worker, Marine, Tank. And I want you to keep building supply depots this entire time. Never getting supply blocked. And try to do that to 100, 150 food. And play a bunch of team games. Play against computers. Play big game hunters. Play use map settings. Just get comfortable doing some real basic hotkey stuff. And just tapping a lot to check. Now, a few things that I want to note that will be different from race to race, which is that if I am Protoss, Protoss is basically going to work the same way as Terran. Protoss is going to have to spend some time doing base layout practice, stuff like this. Just trying to make sure that everything is in a fundamentally good formation. Seems totally right. The only small difference between Protoss and Terran are that you have to build pylons first. So it's very easy to do this early game where you'll have all your pylons stacked together and then you break your own goals for layouts. Where you might go, oh shit, that's right. I wanted to have all my upgrade structures, like my forge and my cybernetics core, up here in the corner. But I've already messed this up. I've already messed this up. So, what you want to do is you just want to think about the order of where you're placing pylons. That's the only real difference between Protoss and Terran. Is just where your first three or four pylons go in advance. Uh, so, top right. So maybe you build your first pylon right here. So that way you can build your first gateway right here. Great. And then maybe you plan on having your second pylon up here. So that way you can build your cybernetics core all jammed up in the corner. And what was the tension between SimCity and base management that we said before? So you base layout, solve your problems. Maybe you keep getting dropped. So you just build a pylon down here as your third pylon. Base management is a really nice place to start out and to focus heavily on because it's self-contained. You can do it all on your own and it helps you learn how to do tasks well and how to sequence the three or four or five different things that are being juggled all at once in a base. Now the last thing that I actually want to spend time talking about is the way in which Zerg is different. Zerg is the most different of the other races and there's really only uh, I think three ways that Zerg is going to be significantly different. The first one is you don't have any space problems because your whole base is basically hatcheries. So you want to think about what your hatcheries are doing. Here's one way to place hatcheries. So all of your structures are tucked away and in different locations. If there are uh, dropships going to be coming in here, it's really nice to have a spire in your spawning pool and your hatchery sort of tucked away. Alternatively, you can use hatcheries to be part of the wall off at the front against Protoss. So that's one of the big things, thinking about hatchery production. Second thing I'd like you to think about when you're practicing your Zerg stuffs is where you want your overlords to go. It's very easy to forget about these guys and just have them get clumped up and just go, ah, whatever, all these guys are here. But far and away, the biggest thing that winds up happening in these games is that you have to be very good about knowing your screen hotkeys. So I have F2 as this, F3 as this, and F4 as this. This is important because as my drones pop out of my larva, I will sometimes need to send them to different locations. If you are uh, a Terran player, the SCVs that come out of the command center, they go right there on those uh, mineral lines. No problem. 
but like, I'm gonna have drones popping out here. So I select all of them. I press F2 and then I right click. I go over here, I select three, these. I press F3 and I right click. Oh, these guys are going away. I press F4 and I right click. Very, very important to set up screen hotkeys as Zerg. Now, that's very overwhelming for you. Don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it. Here's what you can do. Like, literally. Literally, just let the things build. <laughs> let them all pile up here. And once they're all piled up, just scroll your screen over and click. Totally fine. So we've taken a rather long look at base management in this episode. There's really not that much more to say when it comes to fundamentals base management. You just want to have a good layout. We'll actually take a look at this again. You want to have a good layout. You want to spend time organizing. And you want to think as you're playing your games and as you're encountering problems, how can the placement of your building solve those? We also talked about worker production, supply depots, and more. And this ties straight into number four. Just play games where all you're trying to do is build workers, build depots, and never stop production. Those are your big goals. Try to get to 150 supply. Try to get to 150 supply. We talked briefly about hotkey and control organization. We're going to be taking a deeper look at uh, hotkeys and hotkey setups and hotkey problems. There's a lot of overlap between all the various mechanics in StarCraft, but just for some of them, having different control groups on different buildings. And just spend a little bit of time fiddling, training, practicing, repeating over and over and over again, because this is the sort of physical fitness aspect of StarCraft. You want to play soccer? You're going to have to start running some laps, you know what I mean? If you want to play Counter-Strike, you're going to have to start aiming. You're going to have to start practicing aiming. If you are going to play Dota, you're going to have to last hit, right? These are just the fundamentals of the game. Um, so that's it. That's it for the day. What we're going to be doing on Thursday is we're going to be looking at an overview of each of the races, talking about what each unit does in each race. So that that way, we can get a good sense of what are the important units and what are the not important units. Because I think something that can be very overwhelming for a new player is, what the hell should I focus on? And I'm just going to tell you that on Thursday. Tuesday next week, we're going to look at another classic match. And uh, Thursday next week, we'll do another mix of mechanics videos and strategy videos. And that's it. Whoosh. Whoosh. Goodbye. Ooh, wait, we gotta look at this logo again. Oh.